Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing episode two of my series, a, Be a beginner's guide to IndyCar. If you haven't checked the first episode out, I'll leave it in. I'm gonna leave a playlist in the description. You technically don't need to actually watch it in order because all these videos are kind of they can be their own videos. Last video we covered the tracks. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the car and the like regulations and some of the rules around racing. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so now we're going to get into talking about the technical details about about the car. So IndyCar, uh, a lot of you guys probably know this information, but IndyCar is a spec series. And what a spec series means is a spec series is a series that every single competitor races to a specific specification. A lot of lower series like entry level, like, you know, F2, F3, you know, Indy Lights. A lot of, a lot of lower series use spec series where like, for example, F1, it's that's an open series where they have, they, they run to a specification, but they develop their own car. In IndyCar, every team just buys a car. You buy a car off the shelf and you can, there's a few things they can edit. Like for example, they can they can change the dampers. That's one, that's one of the only, one of the big things they can change. They can change the brake ducts. They can use different coolants and lubrications. So whichever brand they want, most likely it's their sponsor. So anyway, I'm going to get into the Pacific car details. So there's two engine manufacturers in IndyCar, the Honda and Chevy, and they both use a 2.2 liter twin turbo V6 that produces about 550 to 700 horsepower. And that is the term by the event. Like for example, on at the Indy 500 on qualifying day, they use the full 700 horsepower for qualifying. And then for the actual race, I think they turn it down to less than that like 600 I don't it's not all public so it's kind of just like kind of it's not no one knows the exact numbers for every single race all they know is they use different horsepower numbers for different races because they don't want to use too powerful engines on small circuits or long straight so they tune it to meet the specification so all the all the the engine specifications are set at 12,000 rpm max max rpm they're they're a six speed the life expectancy of an engine is about 2500 miles may vary it's starting in 2023 they will be using 100 percent renewable renewable fuel provided by shell what's well, going to be kind of interesting to see how that performs and then they have one additional thing they have a push to pass system which is very similar to well actually it's nothing like drs but it's kind of like dear it's indycar's drs so at, on this straight if if a driver wants to overtake they can press up the push to pass and it will give them a little extra horsepower i believe it's about 50 extra horsepower and they can use that for a maximum of 20 seconds 20 seconds at a time so and then they have that ability for only 200 seconds so in my opinion i actually think it's better than drs it's more fair you have to use it strategically. So, and then the tires are provided by Firestone. And this is another really big thing about IndyCar that separates from most sports. They have no power steering, which if you don't know what no power steering, power steering is basically where you can, you can feel the weight of the car. Like in a lot of, you know, even like road cars, you have power steering where you can't really feel the car. You can't feel all the bumps. It's all electronic. And this is your, you, your steering wheel has a direct connection to the road, so you can feel every single bump. If you crash, if you crash at 200 miles an hour into a barrier, you're gonna break your arm, kind of thing. Where in, in, where in F1, if you crash at 200 miles an hour, you're not gonna break your arm, because they have power steering. So that's how that works. So next up, I'm gonna talk about some of the rules and regulations of IndyCar. I'm not gonna to go too crazy on this, because it's pretty standard as standardized across pretty much every single level of motorsports whether it's your local go-kart track to f1 to nascar to whatever race so you you have the green flag basically means the start of the race so it's all green they also display greens after after some sort of caution period or any sort of period to indicate everything's good and you can race so then you have a yellow flag what means there's a hazard on track Generally, it can mean anything from, you know, there's a crash car, maybe there's a piece of debris on the circuit where they kind of just throw a yellow out and get their debris out. And then the next flag is going to be the red flag. The red flag means the session has been 
halted either there's some bad crash there's weather complications or just various things then they have blue flags a blue flag this is actually one of the rules what does different from f1 a blue flag is a it's an advisory flag so if if a back if a leader is coming up on a back marker it basically tells the back marker hey there's a guy coming behind you but here's where it differs from f1 a blue flag is an advisory flag the back marker has no there's no he doesn't have to move out the way he can he can block the leader from overtaking him or not block but just not let him pass for 10 laps 15 laps 20 laps it doesn't matter he's not breaking the rules where in f1 if a driver did that that would be penalized because the rule states in f1 you have to let faster drivers overtake in any cards advisory so then there's the the white flag is means there's one lap left and then the checkered flag it just indicates the race is over or the session is over so they're the main flags which pretty much they're the only flags you ever need to worry about of course there's other flags but they're they're primarily like martial flags to indicate certain stuff which you will never even see on tv so now i'm going to talk about the in race rules so all races are started by rolling starts so generally it's two to two wide yeah three one exception is indy indy actually they actually do free wide at the beginning of the race what's an interesting thing so there's pit stops and what you can do at the pit stops you, you can refuel you can change tires you can adjust wing angles however this is a di another different thing from f1 is there's no mandatory pit stops there's no mandatory tire stops no mandatory fuel stops but at in a sense there is mandatory because it's impossible to complete a race on one set of tires on or on one one fuel tank it's physically impossible so basically pit stops are they're not legally mandated but they are mandated in the sense you can't finish a race without pit stops so generally a good pit stop in indycar is about seven seconds and any pit stop over 10 seconds is considered a bad stop there are allowed to be seven pit crew members during the during the pit stop next up i'm going to talk about the qualifying procedure so the qualifying procedure works slightly different to most sports but relatively similar in a way so there is obviously in indycar i think this year there's 33 cars in total so what they do is they they take the 33 cars split them into two groups the them two groups are determined by their last uh, practice time on practice session three so they put them into two groups the two groups run individually and the the top six from either of them groups go into another group called the fast 12 <clears throat> and then the fast 12 do another session and then the fastest six go into the fast six which is the fast six sets the grid so that's how it works it works slightly different but i think it is a it's a lot better system that it allows for especially with the two groups at the beginning it allows for a lot cleaner running because it would be almost impossible to settle out with 33 cars around the track so it's only 16 so and then the fast 12 is obviously yeah, there's only 12 people on the track so that's even even better opportunity and then in the fast six there's only six drivers on track well you pretty much there's pretty much no chance of anyone blocking your lap as long as you stagger coming out of the pits which most teams will work that kind of stuff out so and then for ovals ovals work slightly different so generally it it changes from oval to oval the you normally go out on track on your own by yourself and you do a best of like three like for example you'll do you'll go on track you'll do one warm-up lap and then you'll go around the track like two to four times and they'll get an average of them times so at india i believe it's three laps now so you'll so if you do some really stellar laps like you do you know a 210 uh, average lap time on two laps but then you screw up on your third lap and you only get an average of like 100 miles an hour you completely screw your qualifying up and you're done and then on indy it works there's even there's another slightly different rule on indy if you set an average lap time of let's just say you you do a really bad run you set an average lap time of 180 miles an hour and you're p33 you can then forfeit your current lap time <coughs> and go back out and try set a better one but the only problem is is you forfeit your last one so let's just say you get a really good time and you get like p6 and then you go out on track and you screw up 
and then you get P12. You cannot get your P6 back. But the only good thing is you can you can you can go back on track as many times as you want as long as there's time for it and just set as many times as you want. Obviously the only diff the only problem is is every single time you do that you forfeit your old lap. So yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be it for this video. So hope you guys enjoyed the second part to my series. The next part should be out should be out in the next few days. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.